the beauty space. Um, there too. I think one of the one of the challenges becomes, I think, with black women, especially just understanding black skin in right. the shades. Mm-hmm. When I think of fashion and beauty, those can be luxury, high end industries, mm-hmm. and and that's what's so trippy sometimes when I watch so many black folks clamor for like that high end fashion, and I'm like, this really was designed for European women. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, or European men. probably (laughs) from like italy and spain so like if you're you know a a, a black man framed six foot two you you know what i'm saying and you're wearing gucci i'm not necessarily saying it looks (laughs) off but it just wasn't designed with this louis vuitton was not designed for you in in space so it's like that black woman in this you know i don't know uh let's say um uh, like a, a whatever like a a versace dress or something Mm -hmm. it and then this black woman walks in with like something like hand woven from ghana you know kente cloth and it's like damn she may get more attention because it's going to fit with that in mind Mm -hmm. i'd assume beauty products have to be that just on the strength of like um you know in most of my journeys at wash they were even saying just like the shades of foundations Mm -hmm. the way lipstick would look what would be seen as natural just isn't as representative throughout the spectrum of what black women represent and i think rihanna was looking to kind of introduce that more in that space but many others uh have been in that space it's just her brand kind of because of her popular celebrity Mm -hmm. moved it to the forefront too yeah i honestly i think like before like 10 years ago a lot of uh, companies, makeup companies did not have dark foundation. Like you literally would have to like search high and low for that. Like after she released, like, I think it was like 30 or 40 different foundations. Everybody was scrambling like, Oh shoot, we got to make sure we got foundation for everybody now. Cause when you go in you see like a thousand colors of white, it's like, how many whites are there? <laughs> like we need shades with like actual pigment in it. So, um, in that, you know, in that realm, um, makeup just recently really became more inclusive. Um, mm. For a long time, even like the shades of red lipstick, like I used to hate wearing red lipstick when I was younger because I was a dancer mm. and we had to wear the blush and the red lips. And I'm like, I look like a clown, literally, because you got me up here with the red cheeks and crazy red lips that doesn't match my undertones. And so um, when I even went into my lab to make these colors, I made sure that they looked good on the deepest tones to the lightest tones. So um, and I feel like when you start with darker, you can lighten it. I know a lot of people say like, oh, start lighter, then you can add more to get to dark. But when and when I say that, I mean, like when I create a color, I want to start on the spectrum of darker skin first and then I want to kind of like phase it out. But see, this is where I'm talking about in design and inception, mm-hmm. because you're going to think of you first. Right. So you're going to think of our people, whereas historically, probably this was designed more than likely by white men, mm-hmm. but, you know, mm-hmm. and then thinking backwards. Right. You know, and then this is also white men's idea of what beauty and beauty standards are, too, because right. that has to be accepted into this whole spectrum as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so. What has been the response as you were making this? Like, and then when did it go from like you in the lab kind of testing and stuff like that to becoming a product for Um, the general public? Yeah. So I actually started formulation in my mom's kitchen. She had like a dirt room, um, like where the laundry was basically where I would do formulation in the back of the house. And I just tested on my skin, my grandmother's, and my mom. So I pretty much stayed in, like, the darker skin spectrum. Uh, This is after college, during college, After college, actually. So this was um, while I was still working as a quality assurance chemist in Ferndale. Okay. So I would work, like, my little 6 to 2 a.m. or 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. shift, and then I would come home. I would play in my little lab (laughs) at the time, Mm -hmm. and I would just experiment with different um like pigments like different micas how they work together and then i will also play around with the raw ingredients that i wanted to use in my actual lipstick i should i I got i'm gonna send you some pictures but i do have like Mm -hmm. pictures of back in the day when i had my little tables probably about this size in the back okay um where i would play with these pigments and essentially i just had my friends like y'all gotta try this come on Come on, best friend, try this. So, um, those were like, like my test subjects. <laughs> I'm like, let me let me see your transcript. Let's let's look at these grades. Look, and in I'm this like, class. if I put it on myself, <laughs> I'm, I, if I put it on myself, I'm sure you guys would be fine. Like, I wouldn't put something on me that 
um, I wouldn't want someone else to wear. I so, know, so, <laughs> but no, I, I definitely had some fun experimenting with um, making the products in the very beginning stage. But now I could just like. What What was the 